We're in the middle of a solar storm from some fast solar wind that's brought aurora to many parts of the world. And the sun, it launches yet another Earth-directed solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week has been a bit on the active side and the sun continues to up the ante. As we take a look at our Earth facing disk, you can see that big coronal hole. This coronal hole has been rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the past several days and it's been sending us some fast solar wind. It's brought us up to active condition over the past few days and giving us some sustained aurora shows both at high latitudes and down into mid latitudes. And it's about time. We haven't had a good aurora show for quite some time, but believe it or not, that is not the only story. Even though we're going to continue to have fast solar wind uh, calm down over the next couple days, we've got something else happening. If you look to the east of that coronal hole, you'll see that big long snaking filament. And on the 20th, the bottom of that thing breaks off and it goes whoosh and it slingshots off of the sun and it looks like it's earth directed. And sure enough, as soon as we got coronagraph images, we could tell it is earth directed. This st solar storm is on its way and it should hit us right around the 23rd and it could give us a decent storm, one that we haven't seen in quite some time. So Aurora photographers, you should be loving life. On top of that, we have region 2803, and it's beginning to pop off a little bit of activity here and there. Not really any big solar storms as of yet, but it isn't staying completely quiet. And it's also boosting that solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, you can see we're sitting pretty low. We're actually well below the B floor, and that means by proxy, this solar flux also continues to be a bit on the low side. However, as we take a look right around the 18th, you start seeing that uh, red line begin to move up. That is from region 2803 as it began to rotate into Earth view, and you can see several pops of very small class flares, but you know, just a bit of little ruckus on the bands. Not a lot of activity, but it does does mean we've gotten a small boost in the solar flux. We're now sitting easily in the mid 70s and will easily stay that way probably for the next week or so, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. And that's good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. At least we're not dropping back to the poor range, even though we only have one active region on the Earth facing disk. So hang in there, guys. This will eventually end. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see back about a week ago we were sitting pretty much at unsettled conditions, even quiet conditions, and then we got a small pocket of fast solar wind that back on the 16th brought us up to active conditions for just a short little bit, brought us a little bit of aurora at high latitudes, but not much else. And then we went back down to quiet conditions and unsettled conditions for a little bit, but then wham! Right about the 19th we got hit by that fast uh, solar wind, that pocket of solar wind we were expecting, but it actually came a little bit early which is good because that meant that it was going to be a pretty strong pocket of fast solar wind. And sure enough, over the 19th, the 20th, and even the 21st, we've been sitting at active conditions pretty much sustained. And that allows that aurora oval to really kind of drop down into the mid-latitudes. And we've been seeing tons of aurora from many parts of the world, which has been absolutely fantastic. Meanwhile, that thing is now beginning to kind of settle down just a little bit. We're beginning to drop out of that fast solar wind. But get ready because we have that Earth-directed solar storm, and that might even bump us up to storm levels, maybe a, a G1 or even higher. It's hard to tell as of yet, but we're getting excited about it because it's the first time we've had a big solar storm in quite a while. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And you can see that solar storm launching off of the sun. Sure enough, most of it is going to go east of Earth, and the west side of it is going to hit Earth, but pretty well. It doesn't look like it's going to graze. It actually looks like it's going to be a pretty decent impact. Now, one of the things you can tell from this model is that this storm is moving quite quickly. In fact, this particular prediction shows it hitting Earth by the 23rd. Wow, and if it does hit Earth that quickly, that means this is going to be a pretty strong storm. So be ready by at least the beginning of the 23rd that it could hit. Likely it will hit later than that, and this is a bit of an over, you know, optimistic prediction. 
But if it does hit as early as the beginning of the 23rd, we will have a decent storm and that will bring Aurora clear, clear deep into mid latitudes. And the other thing that we need to keep in mind is the fact that we've already been storming for so long now that it's not going to take much to rattle Earth's shield and get us back up into strong storm levels. So this could be a really great show because the Earth is what we call preconditioned to storm. So get ready. If it hits the beginning of the 23rd, it's going to be a pretty strong show. If it takes a little bit later, well, you know, before it hits, well, like the 24th or even later than that, then it could be not quite so strong. But either way, we should get some decent aurora out of this. And during this fast solar wind that we've had over the past couple days, there have been some gorgeous aurora shows over many parts of the world. And sadly, I don't have the time to be able to show all of the aurora photos that have been sent in, but I'll show you some of them this week, and then I'll show you some more when I do another solar storm forecast next week. So we've had some beautiful shots like these coronas in Norway, and it was seen in many places in Scotland. Here's just a few. And it was seen in the Shetland in the UK. And as we move over the pond, it was seen in multiple places in Iceland. And as we move over to the Western Hemisphere, it was seen all over Canada. And here are just a few shots. Here's one from Ontario. And it was seen all over Manitoba. And it was seen in multiple places in Saskatchewan. And it was also seen in many parts of Alberta. And the aurora even dipped down into the United States. Of course, we had gorgeous shots in Alaska. But we also saw beautiful uh, views of aurora in Michigan and in Minnesota. And it was also seen in North Dakota. And then finally, we got some decent aurora down south. Believe it or not, Tasmania and New Zealand are back in the game. Here's a gorgeous shot that was, that was seen in Tasmania. And here's just a couple shots from New Zealand. Like I said, I can't show them all. I'll show them more next week. And believe it or not, we even saw some aurora in Antarctica on a shipping vessel. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, a little bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo's view, if you look at the west limb, you can see two coronal holes, one that's kind of rotating off of the Stereo's west limb, and another one, and it's sandwiching this big long filament. Do you see that big long snaky thing? That filament right there, that is the one that is now launched off towards Earth and is going to be a solar storm here at Earth in a few days. And funny thing is, that not only is that a big filament, but it's being sandwiched by yet another coronal hole. So after we get that filament hitting Earth, we're going to have some more fast solar wind. So the Earth is going to be rattled easily over this next week. Um, and we may get some decent aurora sustained for quite some time. Now, not only that, but we also have region 2803. As you can see, that region is actually humming right along. It's actually fired off, you know, little mini solar flares and maybe a couple mini solar storms that look like they've kind of fallen back to the surface of the sun. But, you know, we're going to keep our eye on it just in case it continues to grow. The nice thing about it is keeping the solar flux and it's uh, keeping the, the um, regular in the marginal range, and it will continue to do that easily over the next week while we wait for new active regions to emerge. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 27th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. Too bad. So you're going to have to, uh, you know, check your exposures and check those local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are getting that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and that's been happening over the past few days, and it's already bumped us up to active conditions, and so we're going to expect more of the same, at least the beginning part of the week. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting active conditions with up to about a 45% chance of a major storm. Now, I am actually going to bump that up even higher because in the NOAA prediction, 
predictions, they have not factored in this Earth-directed solar storm that we're expecting at least by the 23rd. So I'm going to bump us up to a possibility of minor storm conditions and up to about a 60% chance of a major storm at high latitudes. And this is at the worst case scenario. And we should continue storming like that into the end of the week and maybe begin to calm down through the weekend. But then, of course, we have that other coronal hole that's going to give us some more fast wind, so we'll pick back up again. Now, at mid-latitudes, we're also only expecting about 25% chance of active conditions for the rest of this solar, this uh, fast solar wind. But once again, when that solar storm hits in and around the 23rd and in the 24th, we should bump up to easily minor storm conditions. Uh, about a 15% chance of it is what I'm giving us, and that's the worst case scenario. And the reason for that is because the Earth's field is already so rattled. Now, we could easily go much higher than this, but that's going to depend upon the magnetic field orientation of that solar storm. If that storm has the right configuration, we could easily bump up to moderate storm levels, even at mid-latitudes. But if it's the wrong configuration, then we'll likely get to minor storm conditions probably for a short while and then calm back down pretty quickly. So a lot depends upon what we see once the storm gets here. But even in through that, we should be kind of having definitely disturbed conditions in through the weekend. And then again, we have that fast solar wind that's going to be on the tail of this storm. So up through the weekend, we're going to start storming again. So it looks like pretty much all week, the Aurora photographers have something to look forward to. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We only have one real bright region on the Earth-facing disk right now. That's region 2803, and it is a sunspot, and it is giving us a little bit of activity, but it's not enough to cause any radio blackouts or any big flares. So you GPS users, everything should be in the green for you. You should have no issues on Earth's day side with GPS reception. However, that region is boosting the solar flux, we are easily in the mid 70s and that means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side and these conditions will easily continue over the next week um, before things begin to calm down because this region looks like it's pretty healthy right now and you also might hear a little crackle on the band simply because it it is giving a little radio noise so enjoy that marginal radio propagation and we'll keep hoping that the the solar flux continues to rise now also because we are at solar minimum we are still trying to climb out of it we are having a higher radiation dose than we would normally have because of those cosmic rays uh, the cosmic ray flux is a bit higher so you frequent flyers and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are getting the moderate dose for radiation right now, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. Not only have we been getting some fast solar wind over the past couple days that have given us some sustained aurora even down into mid-latitudes, but we have yet another solar storm on the way. This one is Earth-directed, and it could actually bump us up into real storm levels. And with along with the preconditioning that we've had with our, our Earth being so already kind of in the middle of storming for so long, it could bump us up even to a higher storm level than we would normally have. So so it's definitely the best chance we've had to see Aurora all year, which doesn't mean all that much, but uh, hey, it's the best chance we've had to have Aurora for quite some time. Let me put it that way. So Aurora photographers, definitely charge your batteries and get ready right about the 23rd, because that's about when it could hit at the earliest, but it might hit as late as the 25th. So, you know, hang in there. And then on top of that, we have some more fast wind from a different coronal hole that'll be rotating in through the strike zone after that. So we could be storming with Aurora on and off easily over this next week. Now, I know that that makes amateur radio operators and the emergency responders, it makes you groan a little bit because Earth's night side is going to be probably a wreck for the next week. But just hang in there. We've got marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, and it might actually be boosted a little bit because of all of this storming. So you might get better uh, propagation on some of the bands than you're used to getting or that the solar flux numbers would lead you to believe. So just hang in there and just know the night side is going to be a little bit of a mess for a bit. And now you GPS users, well, things aren't so great for you on Earth's night side. Boy, it could be a real pain for you, especially anywhere near Aurora or near those Dawn Dust Terminators. But on Earth's day side, you know, we don't have a lot of activity going on. There's not a lot of risk for radio blackouts or anything like that. So your GPS reception on Earth's day side should still be pretty good. So just hang in there and just know that, you know, after about a week or so, things will definitely settle down. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.